The BC-474 receiver transmitter was part of the uh, SCR-288 radio system. We'll go through this one and look at this one for a few minutes here and give you kind of an idea of how the radio is laid out and how it works. This is a picture of the manual and uh, it consists of three main pieces, a receiver, the battery box for the receiver, and the transmitter. The battery box provides one and a half in 90 volts for the receiver. And then there's an external 6.3 and 300 volt power supply for the transmitter. So once you have that all together, it's uh, ready to operate. One of the things with this radio was uh, a lot of the micromole capacitors were really bad and they needed to be replaced. So uh, the ones on the top of the chassis were pretty easy, but there's also a mysterious capacitor can. It looks like a transformer or something, and uh, that has a bunch of capacitors sealed in wax. And of course, they're all leaky and old and needed to be replaced too. So that's kind of an uh, interesting little trick with the 474. So with that all done, we're ready to go ahead and try the receiver. We'll hook it up to the signal generator on a 3885, put it in CW, and we could zero beat the receiver. Disconnect the signal generator. We will bring an antenna cable in and hook it to an antenna. We're in the AM voice mode right now. Switch it back over to CW. You have to be careful when uh, trying to copy sideband stations. It's not only touchy tuning, but also uh, not to overload the input to the receiver. Go down to the CW subband. Tune around a little bit. There's someone calling CQ. The receiver is pretty simple. The uh, transmitter circuit's really amazing because uh, they used three 6V6 tubes and it looks like something out of the 1938 ARL handbook. One thing that was kind of weak on the design of the transmitter was the location of uh, C13, which is uh, on the wrong side of the transmit receive switch. So I moved that over to the other side, the hot side, and then that way uh, you don't get any side effects from when you switch from transmit back to receive. Also added this little uh, 0 0.1 600 volt capacitor on the uh, B plus side of the transmitter because uh, it's a little better with moving RF than the electrolytic was. So let's turn on the external transmit power supply. And the first thing we're going to do is spot the radio. So we go all the way over to calibrate. And you use the transmitter's oscillator to zero beat it against your receive frequency. So that way the transmitter and receiver are both on the same frequency. We'll go to CW mode. Let's make it about three watts in CW. Switch it to transmit. And when you close the key, it transmits. We'll go ahead and dip the plate current and peak the antenna current. One of the things you want to do also is the antenna loading. And there's two knobs for the antenna loading. And what you're going to do is just load it for peak antenna current. And then I like to go back and hit the uh, PA tuning too, just to make sure we're in resonance. We'll go back over to receive. 
In the AM mode, it's once again about three or four watts. We'll take and plug the microphone in. Switch it to the phone mode. And switch it over to transmit. Now, although it's a push-to-talk microphone, it's not a push-to-talk radio. It's a manual transmit-receive. And you only have side tone in AM, not in CW, which is kind of bothersome. But other than that, it's not a bad little radio for what it is and when it was designed. So I hope this gives you a couple ideas that if you see one or uh, wanted to restore one, what you could do with it. Thank you for watching.